Hey, hello everyone. Hello, mind, brain, and behavior one people. I look at that, we've got a countdown happening. How are you there today? Can you hear me okay? Am I coming through? <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement too, Noah. It's very exciting. Hi, Alexis. Echoing. Hmm. Really? What is that echo from, I wonder? So great to see so many of you out there tuning in for this important update. Thank you so much. Uh, that is wonderful to see you still keen. Okay, thank you, Hannah and Alexis. Good to hear that um, the tech is working for you guys. Fantastic. So hi, how are you? How is mind, brain, and behavior one treating you? How's COVID treating you? Uh, of course, restrictions are easing, so maybe you're getting out and about a little bit more now, um, which should be nice for everyone, still being safe, of course, and maintaining social distance. Hi, Trithuni, thank you very much. I am well. Uh, I, um, I feel like just as restrictions are starting to ease that I've just found my groove with this working from home um, thing and uh, with the isolation. So a better late than never, I suppose. Um, uh, but uh, thank you for asking. I am well, very excited about um, coming back to spend more time with you in our final week of Mind, Brain and Behaviour one next week. So uh, I'll kick Jason off stage and I'll take over next week and we will, um, well, I'll tell you a little bit what we'll be doing, but of course we'll be focusing on preparing you for the exam and revising and uh, trying to set your exam preparation journey up such that it is as smooth and as stress-free as possible. Final stretch. That's right, Joshua. Almost there. Um, it's treating you better than your other subjects. Oh, okay. That's good. Hey, Aaron, yeah, this will be recorded. So you'll be able to access it, the recording via the same link. Uh, if you need to go, that's all fine. I got a bit animated there in the chat, didn't I? Just to start off with, probably thought I was coming in with spandex and pyrotechnics, but uh, it's the coffee. I've got my, my nice new little espresso cups here that I got, keeping me fueled today. Charlie, I have got an answer for you on that. I'm going to address all of those things. In this stream today, we're going to talk about the exam and as many details as I can give you at this point in time on the exam. And that's because there are as many, the details I'll give you are as many as I have right now. Um, and we're going to talk about when you can expect your assignment feedback to be returned. We're going to talk about um, the REP. We're going to talk about the assessment literacy module. We'll talk about how to tie up all of the things that you'll need to tie up to successfully complete mind, brain and behavior one and how to do this all without worry and without stress. That shelf in the background, so much achievement. Uh, I did them somewhere, right? Uh, some of them. Um, oh, you had live in two tabs. There you go. That'll explain things, Rajdeep. Uh, 
waiting to see my lectures in Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2. I am really excited about Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 right now. Um, I've been receiving some questions from people in the last week um, about uh, some of the mental health and illness related content that I'll present in my brain and behavior too, where we have a section on clinical psychology. And thank you for those people that came along to our webinar about uh, teleweb, telephone and online mental health services in the, the COVID era and what to expect in terms of volunteer opportunities and employment opportunities if you decide you want to go on and practice in that area in the future. It was really well attended. Um, and for those of you who are interested in becoming a mental health practitioner and would like to hear more about what sorts of opportunities there are out there in working online or working via a telephone with clients, um, I might circulate a, a link uh, to, for your interest. In fact, uh, did I already do that? I can't remember. No, I didn't circulate the final link. So um, I used to govern some very large mental health services that operate online and by telephone. And um, uh, we'll certainly be talking about that in semester two, but we'll talk about a range of things in semester two. And it seems like there's been a bit of interest about that coming out of that webinar. So that's great. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes in preparation for semester two at the moment. So just like we revamped Mind, Brain and Behaviour One this year, and then COVID happened. But still, the revamp put us in good stead to be able to adapt, I think. Um, the same structure is going to be there in semester two, where we have two lectures a week, where we have one practical class a week, where we're trying to engage more outside of lectures. So for all of my clinical work um, and the research methods that comes in semester two, this is going to be the way that I engage. And of course, every lecturer has tried a different thing this semester, haven't they? We've had a myth who engaged with you via the discussion board primarily, peers who engaged with you around his content via the Google Docs and then pre-recorded videos, and then Jason who's been doing something similar. One of the sessions that we'll have next week will be um, engaging around the research methods component of Mind, Brain and Behaviour One. And I'll do that live with you. So you'll be able to come along with your questions and we'll have a good hour long consultation around that. Um, and uh, I like to uh, have these sessions live and that's certainly what we'll be doing in uh, Mind, Brain and Behaviour uh, Two. Um, I certainly can talk about SPSS and how that to, uh, ties into the exam. Um, so, and yes, readings, we can talk about all this. Uh, hi, Quian. Um, I would like to answer your question, but I'm not sure what you mean about a personal lecture. Are we talking about personality, maybe? There are certainly personality uh, lectures in Mind, Brain and Behaviour too. Um, I will talk about personality as it relates to mental health. Um, so I'll talk about how personality um, styles or types can um, act as a vulnerability for developing certain mental health problems. And I'll also talk about certain types of mental health problems which manifest as um, extreme um, versions of personality, extreme ways of being. Um, so, uh, yeah, there is some stuff around personality coming, if that is your question. And, of course... Professor Nick Haslam, who um, was our previous head of school here and um, just one of the most prolific academics that I've ever met in my life. Uh, we're, we're so lucky to have him on, uh, on the first year teaching roster. He'll be talking about personality. It is one of his 
specialist areas. So to finish up the spruik about mind, brain and behavior too, we of course have research methods via modules again and in practical classes. We have clinical psychology, that's me at the start. Then we have developmental psychology with Dr. Abby Brooker. We have social psychology with Dr. Katie Greenaway and then personality psychology with Professor Nick Haslam. You mean if it was a person? Okay, well, there you go. We'll talk about personality anyway. Um, so, Quian, that's a really good question. Will my brain and behavior too be in person on campus or will it be online like we're doing this time? I don't have a concrete answer for you at this point because I haven't been given one, but I'm happy to tell you what I want. Uh, I am advocating, I would like to, I'm asking for us to be online for the semester. Gradual incremental return to campus and I think it's gonna be messy. I much prefer to have a clear expectation around how we are doing the subject so that we can deliver it the best way possible via that mode, whichever it is. I think it's going to be online. I'm quite confident it's going to be online. And I think if we um, can clarify your expectations, my expectations, we can all work together and make it the best possible iteration of mind, brain and behavior too. Yeah. So hope that answers that question. So enough about mind, brain and behavior to the take home messages, I think they're likely online um, and um, but uh, there's obviously uh, I, I think um, a range of very good reasons to do it that way and in, in many ways this year I think it's going to be better if we do it online. Ah, I'm so uh, glad that you asked that question Surinjana. Um, will the MBB1 resources be available later in the year? Typically, subjects close, the Canvas site will close for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 somewhere mid-year after we've done the exams. My advice to you for every subject you're in is to download the content you want to keep, even if you think you might not want to. You might find that in future years you might think, oh, I want to know about that lecture or download the subject manual. So imagine that you end up deciding to travel to see, go to another university. They're not going to want to see the subject manual if you're going to apply for advanced credit or something like that. Get as much um, content downloaded as you can during semester so that you um, don't miss out. Okay, let's talk exam. Ready? Are you ready to talk exam? It was a little bit sure, wasn't it? Talk exam. Uh, well, I was a little bit sure, Elvis. Hmm. So, the exam. See, the date is up there as Monday, June 29th. Right? Stand right. So here is the deal. Shanil, what did I just saw an interesting question? Joshua, past exams will not be available. There are no past exams available online or in the library or anything like that. So I'm pulling up my notes here. Oh, which have just crashed. Awesome. The exam, and I'm going to provide this in writing up on Canvas, but here we go. So the exam is going to start at, turns off the volume of all these notifications. The exam starts on June the 29th, Monday at 9 a.m. I've said it before and it's true. I'm going to give you a period of time across the week starting at that point, at Monday 9 a.m., that's when the exam will open. And the exam will be in Canvas. It's going to be in Canvas, in the Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 Canvas site 
there's going to be the exam and I'll give you all the details ahead of time so you know where and how to access it. It will open at 9 a.m. on Monday, June 29. It will close at 5 p.m. on Friday, July 3rd. That is a business week, right? So you can, at any point during that week, complete the exam. Once you're in, once you start the exam, you will need to finish it in a single setting. You're not going to be able to go away and finish it incrementally across the week. Once you're in, you must sit the exam. You will have three hours and 15 minutes. So the 15 minutes is to give you reading time when you start, even though we won't be policing that 15 minutes, strictly speaking, um, like we would in an examination hall. You've got precisely the equivalent amount of time to read and complete the exam that you would if we were under face-to-face, in-person um, exam and examination conditions at... Am I still lagging? I just noticed that somebody said I'm lagging. Am I still lagging? Am I okay? Oh, okay. Well, good. All right. Yeah. So, snuck, yeah, that's right, Charmaine. So, snuck in that extra 15 minutes there for you. So, um, why is the exam three hours and 15 minutes long? It's unusually long for an exam that has only 120 questions. It's longer than the standard approach that the university would take. And I do that for a very um, important reason well, a couple of important reasons. A, I don't want to stress you out. And B, I'm well aware that so many students are studying uh, with, uh, for the very first time with um, English as a second language and uh, having to deal with, um, you know, some really heavy neuroscience jargon and so forth. And so it's just a way of giving you more time um, to navigate language if that's an issue for you and just to not stress out and to uh, have sufficient time and space to be able to do what you need to do with the exam. So again, it opens at Monday, 9 a.m., June 29. It closes on the Friday at 5 p.m. Now, when it closes, it's just gonna automatically close. Now, this is important. This means that you should not log in to do the exam at 4 p.m. because it's only going to have an hour left. 5 p.m. is the deadline to complete the exam, not to start to complete it. So don't log in at 4.30 on the Friday. You'll have half an hour to do the exam. And when it closes, it will just close. So we've just been through an assignment period and you're familiar with the concept of extensions. Extensions are not the way that exams work at the University of Melbourne. If for some reason in due course, you cannot sit the exam during that week, then that's okay, but you'll need to submit a special consideration application to sit the exam in the supplementary exam period, which will be about a month later. And there will be a different exam offered at that point in time. It will, again, be via the Canvas LMS. Um, but uh, I'm hoping this date is going to be, and the way that we're setting this up is going to um, really make things as easy as possible for the majority of uh, students out there to get the exam completed without stress or fuss. It's still a month away so we've got um, we've got all of June to prepare for the mind brain and behavior one exam tons of time we've got next week together I'm going to spend a lot of time with you next week preparing you to sit the exam and to help you get started in thinking about the exam and thinking about what you want from the exam and how to approach it 
I will in due course be posting um, information about uh, technical support that you can access um, from the university uh, should you experience an issue during the exam. Uh, we've got as many bases covered uh, as possible. It is open book, which means you can refer to your notes and to answer those questions that were in the um, chat room before. These notes can be electronic, so you can be looking up your notes on your Word documents and your PowerPoint slides and whatnot. That's all completely fine. Yeah. Um, it is multiple choice questions and just multiple choice questions. There's 120 questions total. 30 questions will come from each section of the course. This means that there's 30 from Meredith and the learning um, and memory section of the course. There's 30 from peers and the sensation and perception component of the course. 30 from Jason and the behavioral neuroscience quest, uh, section of the course. And finally, 30 from me and the research methods component of the course. The, somebody asked about readings before. Readings will um, sort of be indirectly examinable, I suppose. We won't be examining them directly, but of course the readings were referred to in lectures, so the core readings have been referred to in lectures and in practical classes. So if you understand and can remember the content that was presented in lectures and practical classes, then you're fine, you're covered. And of course, the research methods modules. Doing the readings will just help your understanding and improve the likelihood that you actually, you know, perform well in those sorts of questions where there's overlap. Will there be therefore something on the reading that hasn't been presented in the tutorial or lecture that could be examined? No. So we only examine the tutorials, the lectures, the modules for research methods, and to the extent in which they overlap with the readings, sure, the readings are sort of indirectly examinable. I hope that makes sense. So that's where the lectures, uh, the questions are coming from. Incidentally, the questions will be in blocks of the order that I just mentioned. So it will be um, memory first, learning and memory, then sensation and perception, then neuroscience, and then research methods last. The questions will be randomized. So the order of uh, the questions will be randomized every time a, a different student takes the exam. Everybody will get the same questions, that's right, but the order of the questions will be different for every person. Um, hey, Will, yeah, that's right. We won't be enforcing the 15 minutes. There's no way for us to enforce that. Um, what you'll need to think about is how you choose to approach the exam um, and whether or not you think the 15 minutes reading time is useful for you. I personally think it is useful. I found the opportunity when I was sitting exams to have that 15 minutes to go through the questions, to think through and identify the questions in my head for most of the, the, the answers, I should say, for most of the questions. I found that to be a really useful way to approach the exam, to know which questions I could respond to quickly which ones were going to be more difficult for me and that I'd have to factor in additional time to complete. It's just uh, something to, um, I suppose, for each student to think about. I would recommend taking advantage of that 15 minutes to read the, um, read the exam at the start. Can you go back to a question once you have answered it? If you want to change your answers, yes, you will be able to do that until you submit. Now, there's going to be a time limit for each person. So once 
you log in. We talked about the exam portal closing at 5 p.m. on July 3rd, the Friday, and that's true. It's going to do that. The exam will also close for you at the three hour and 15 minute mark. As soon as it hits that, it's closed. You won't be able to respond. Whatever you have answered to that point will be the answers to the exam that you um, are going to be credited for. So as you proceed through the exam, you want to keep an eye on time. Uh, if it was me, I would plan in advance, and we'll talk about this next week, but I'd plan in advance when I was going to sit the exam. I'd make sure that that's going to be a three-hour and 15-minute window where I'm not going to have interruptions, where I can be in my office without um, people bothering me, having all of my messaging systems turned off and so forth. Um, so that I could uh, sit that, focus on it, get it done, submit it, and move on with the rest of my life. Hey, Katia, that's a good question. Um, this is the only time that the mind, brain, and behavior one content will be examined. When we get into mind, brain, and behavior two next semester, the mind, brain, and behavior two exam will just be about mind, brain, and behavior two content. So nothing to do with mind, brain, and behavior one. And there's no overall for theory exam. The SPSS activities. Yeah, good question. So in the exam, I won't be asking you to use SPSS. So I won't ask you to um, navigate files or open a program or anything like that. But what I will do is present you with output from SPSS. And I'll be asking you to interpret that output and to select an answer from the four possible choices that you will have. And so that's a good point. I should mention that for each exam question, there will be four answers presented. You'll be required to select the correct answer. Oliver, if you encounter an inter internet disruption, um, we're going to be able to um, tell and to help. Uh, so um, I am going to, in the coming week, distribute um, a um, link to a web page that's going to describe the, all the technical issues and how to get help and support and so forth. All, all taken care of, all under control. Uh, don't worry, it, it will be fine. Uh, an electronic dictionary, uh, Yishan, yes, for, uh, especially if you've got second, uh, English as a second language and uh, you're looking for a bilingual dictionary, yeah, by all means. How long should it take for an efficient student? David, I think you're going to find the exam to be very fair. Um, even though it's a month away, we're already constructing the exam. So every lecturer has, I think, completed or almost completed their questions and we're starting to build in Canvas and that's so that we can build in the next week or so and then have, you know, three weeks or so to debug and test and make sure everything is working exactly um, how it should um, and that we've all vetted the questions and the questions are all correct. Uh, and so um, you can rest assured that there's going to be multiple academics, all of the lecturers checking all of the questions, plus some independent RAs as well, research assistants uh, doing that checking. Um, uh, so I hope that uh, clears up uh, that question. You carry the exam opens on the 29th and will shut on the 3rd. Listen back to the start of this stream and you'll have heard me uh, talking about that. Closes on the 3rd, Rufina. The 3rd. <coughs> um, we'll be talking a lot more next week. Uh, as we have our live consultation sessions to wind up the semester. 
Um, so that's um, probably, I think, all of the, the chatter about the exam that we really need to have right now. Belinda, um, there's not going to be an entire practice exam per se, but I suppose all of the, you know, so all of those feedback questions that I've given you in the research methods modules, whilst um, helping you get a sense of your progress and understanding of those core concepts in each module, they are also very representative of the type of questions I'll be asking in the exam. Um, so uh, hopefully giving you practice for and and uh, a sense of what the exam flavor will be. And of course, there's peerwise as well. If you haven't logged into peerwise yet, make sure you're logging into peerwise and taking advantage of the opportunity to collaborate uh, on um, developing um, uh, quick questions, uh, rehearsal questions over the coming month. Definitely something to do if you haven't already. Yes, the, le uh, the lecture's enough to cover all, cover all of the learning objectives. Have a listen back to the start of the stream, Isabel, and I went over that, so the tutorials and the lectures and my modules as well. Uh, your, your notes can be printed or online. The pass percentage will be 50, 50% 50 to pass for any um, assessment, typically most assessments at the University of Melbourne at the undergraduate level. Um, so, uh, and that applies to Mind Brain and Behaviour 1 overall as well. So technically speaking, you could bomb out on the exam, have done really well on the assignment, and that would all even out if you could get 50% or more and have satisfied all of the hurdle requirements across the semester. Let's talk about that. So who wants to know when the exam marks are going to be handed back? Uh, sorry, not the exam marks, the assignment marks, your essay marks. I'd like to know when we're going to hand them back. Oh, before I talk about that, Daniela, good question. The discussion boards, have a guess when I'm going to shut the discussion board for uh, comments. I'm going to shut the discussion board for comments um, before the exam starts. Um, so there's not going to be any new material that's presented on the Canvas site that could benefit people sitting the exam later in the week that the people at the start of the week didn't have um, access to. Somebody asked about cheating. Will I know if people are cheating? I think I will. I have my ways and means. Um, I've, I've got a little bit of view, uh, but like video game developers and um, uh, and I cheat strategies, I won't be telling people what that voodoo is. Trust me, mum has got some voodoo. Um, me, everybody says me. Oh my God, what my assignment feedback. Well, how would you feel if I told you that your assignment feedback will be available tomorrow? So tomorrow you will receive your assignment feedback um, in the afternoon, I believe. Hang on, is today Thursday? Yes, yeah, so tomorrow. So let me tell you about the process. Obviously, it has been about two and a half weeks now since you submitted the assignment. And um, you, for the first time, have uh, more than ever have gained an insight into our marking process because of the assessment literacy module. So what we have done is gone through a process over the last three weeks or so, and it was even, it even commenced before your um, assignments were submitted of benchmarking, of providing benchmarks according to the marking criteria uh, to rate quality of the constituent features of each essay according to the criteria and um, going through a marking process, a calibration process where multiple tutors would cross mark essays to make sure they're marking in a reliable and a consistent fashion. 
They've then gone ahead and they have marked all of the essays. Um, we have then collated the data and Caitlin, the principal tutor who's been driving all of this marking process, this is a massive job for Caitlin uh, and for the tutors, for the entire staff behind the scenes there. Um, we've then collated the data and we've inspected, talking about research methods, we've inspected the distributions of each tutor's marking. We've looked at things like means and standard deviations and compared each tutor to every other tutor. And we have, in some instances, asked tutors to adjust their marks to ensure that everything is statistically reliable, that everybody's marking in exactly the same way. So by the time you go through that, adjusting marks, inspecting the marks again, coming up with final distributions and finally signing off on them, you can imagine that three-week process is actually a really labour-intensive process, and it is. So um, my sincere thanks to all of the tutors who might be um, tuned in right now and to Caitlin and to Rebecca and to Meredith for all of their work um, and inputting into this really massive process. Um, so you might not have known that all of that went on behind the scenes um, to mark your essays, but we want to make sure that when we get to tomorrow, that we can have good confidence in knowing that the marks are right. So if you, having said that, if you do receive your mark tomorrow and you feel that according to the marking criteria, the assessment is wrong, here's what you need to do. You need to firstly take a day to pause and to think about it. And that's because, that's it's very important. It's because when we um, sometimes receive this type of information, it can trigger our emotions and we can make emotional responses without actually stopping and letting ourselves, let the emotions subside and letting ourselves engage mentally with the process and scrutinize those marking criteria and so forth. So you need to wait a business day before um, contacting your tutor with queries of those name of that nature. And your tutor is who you contact in the first instance. Um, and if these are scheduled for late tomorrow, so we're talking about late in the afternoon tomorrow, I believe it's when they are committed. That means that really Tuesday would be when could uh, contact your tutor and Tuesday is when you should contact your tutor in that instance. In fact, if you refer to the student manual, um, the years one to three undergraduate student manual or graduate diploma student manual, if you're a grad dip, that's available in the module section of Canvas. It gives you all the details, all the instructions about what to do. But having said that, having been through the incredibly rigorous process that we have been through, uh, and seeing that the distribution of marks is probably higher than I would have anticipated it would have been before we embarked on this, I think that um, we've come out with a really good result. And you have all come out with a really good result. And in, yeah, let me reflect on that for a moment. You are asked to do something that's um, really conceptually difficult. I think some of the content that you were grappling with um, around um, memory retrieval and um, uh, Meredith's content was, uh, you know, challenging. And so hats off to you for your first semester in psychology, uh, jumping into grappling with some of those issues and writing about them in an essay for psychology, which so many of you wouldn't have done before as well. So pat on the back for everyone. Good job. Oh, now I'm lagging again. Am I still lagging or am I? Am I still doing the, the lagging? Okay, cool. Thanks everyone. Um, were the trends and grade distribution similar to the previous years? Um, no, higher this year. I suppose the overall shape of the distribution was similar, which shape, uh, distribution shapes in um, uh, uh, 
research methods, didn't we? Uh, and so the shape of the distribution was, it's interestingly normal. It's approximating normality. It's just shifted a little bit higher this year than it was previously. Um, so, uh, and in fact, I will um, share that distribution with you in the coming week. Maybe we'll talk about it in uh, one of my consultation and revision and exam preparation sessions and consider it as a distribution data. Um, okay, so for everybody who has submitted an assignment on time, your feedback will be available late tomorrow afternoon. For everybody who has submitted an assignment with an extension, depending on how late, how lengthy that extension was, you may or may not receive feedback tomorrow afternoon. It may still be being marked. I know some people have got an extension that's still going. Uh, if that's the case, um, um, that's fine. You uh, proceed accordingly and submit it in accordance with the, the extension application or the special consideration application. That's fine. If you have not yet submitted an assignment and you have not yet submitted a special consideration application, you need to in order to be eligible to pass the Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 subject. So you can't not submit the assignment and pass the subject. That's not possible. Um, but it is still possible at this time to obtain special consideration. So if you are in that position, please do not worry. Please submit a special consideration application outlining why you would still need an extension. And you'll also need to demonstrate um, why you haven't been able to apply for a special consideration application until now. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email if you're in this situation and I'll help you as best I can. Um, what else am I thinking of? So speaking about tying up loose ends, my little bit of notes here that I wanted to talk with you about. There is... Of course, the, re the research experience program. So REP, the research experience program is still going. Remember the deadline has been extended through to the 12th of June. So still two weeks to get your REP credits in. And I know there's hundreds of people that haven't even got any yet. Um, I'd suggest that, you know, you should <laughs> get, there's up to 5% of your mark available. Um, and just from a, the perspective of making everything you can out of this experience of um, studying psychology, there's a lot to be learned through participating in psychological research. I still participate in psychological research. I recently, uh, as last week, participated in um, a study from uh, an old colleague of mine, uh, partly because I was interested in what they were doing and partly because I wanted to contribute um, uh, my um, experience to the findings. Um, so, um, and that's something else to, to think about when you do uh, participate in REP, you are actually making a contribution. You're making a contribution to the field through your participation. So you are having your experiences or your psychometric data, if it's a psychophysics experiment, um, recorded and contributed um, in an aggregated, de-identified, obviously confidential fashion. Um, you're making a contribution to the field and you're making a contribution to the postgrad students as well, the honours students and the, the master's students and PhD students. They're all out there hoping that you will participate uh, in the coming uh, week so that they can get some data for um, their uh, theses, their their um, their um, big assignments that they write for their postgraduate um, uh, degrees, uh, which are um, you know how they how they satisfy the requirements of their degree. So. Um, uh, there's always the pro-social aspect as well. So lots of reasons too 
uh, participate in the REP. I know that there weren't many studies to start off with. The whole REP journey has just been very <sighs> discombobulated because we started off with face-to-face -face and online with an even split and then COVID happened and they went all online and then all of the researchers had to adapt their studies to online and get it through ethics and that's taken time and it's really only recently that there's been a glut of projects available and there are, there are now. There's lots of projects available, more than enough for everybody in Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1 to get 5% credit. Uh, so definitely um, go and register for REP. And thank you, Belinda. Yes, go to Canvas in the modules section. There's the research experience participation section there. Go and sign up if you haven't already and um, participate in some research. Uh, Just looking at the chat window here. Oh, can you have your other tabs open while you're doing the exam? I mean, yes, you can. I imagine lots of you have got your notes scored in, uh, stored in Google Docs, would be looking at, you know, slides on from Canvas, got the exam open, it's an open book exam. So, yeah, you can do this. Um, one thing that people have been asking about is, um, uh, you know, will I know if, uh, what happens if somebody cheats and passes uh, a screenshot of the questions to someone else and people that sit the exam later in the week might know about what the questions are? Well, I've got numerous ways to detect this. Uh, and again, keeping my voodoo secret. Um, but yes, I'll absolutely be able to detect that. And then I'll get out my wooden spoon. Whoosh! Or not. But yes, there will be a, <laughs> some type of serious wooden spoon. The same, so the, it's the same thing with um, uh, cheating in a normal exam. Same sort of outcomes apply. Uh, so that would be a good example of what would be considered cheating in this in this exam, right? So no passing questions through to other people and, and so forth. Um, hope that makes sense. So the other thing um, that uh, I will be bu building in is that the order of questions, the order of answers for each question are going to be different for each person. So taking screenshots is, is or, or, you know, coming up with a list of, and the, the order of questions are going to be randomised. Lots of randomise, randomization going on, but that's more of a control than a, a way to find cheating. I have my ways to find cheating. Um, yeah, academic misconduct. Uh, uh, Jathumi, you can include or exclude subjects this semester for your WAM on a subject by subject basis. So um, you can pick and choose. The whole thing, David, is not sharing. So you need to keep anything you're doing with the exam confidential to you. And, and not anyone else, um, even if it's pro-social uh, and somebody says, I'm not going to, you know, put in the same answers or I'm not going to benefit if it turns out that the same answers end up being there, I'll know. Um, 
And I have my ways of telling whether or not that is by accident, just happenstance or not. So uh, we don't like collusion here. That's right, Alex. It's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a, to, I know I'm joking about wooden spoons and whatnot, but this is a, this is, um, a really serious issue for academics. Um, and I include you all as academics as at this point, you're engaged in scholarly academic activity. Your future at some point uh, and your journey at the moment is being determined by the way in which you conduct your, um, your uh, scholarly work. And um, you've put a lot of work, for example, into essays lately. Um, if you were to have your work stolen by somebody and reproduced without crediting you, that would probably um, uh, you would make you angry or frustrated. Uh, and uh, I would be right there with you. You're, when you work academically, as you all are, what you produce is your academic it's your intellectual property. And if somebody steals that property, um, you know, you've got every right to be upset. It's, it's practice in academia. And I must say, you know, probably the thing that really gets my goat if I say it cleanly. Um, all right. We've talked about RME, we've talked about the exam. Um, 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 assignment feedback, we've talked about the assessment literacy hurdle. So the assessment literacy module, remember, is a hurdle requirement for complete mind, brain, and behavior. Two, one, sorry, one. Um, so if you have not completed the assessment literacy module yet, you can go back and do it now. Go back and do it because you can't pass mind, brain, and behavior one until you complete it. So go back and do that now. I'm getting a lot of emails about attendance. Do attendance hurdle requirements count? In psychology subjects, they do. So I know most of the other subjects in the university have waived attendance hurdle requirements. It's not the case for psychology subjects. We're, in a, we're one of the rare subjects, sort of like medicine or dentistry, where there is a professionally accredited stream. So by taking the subject, you're taking your first step in making yourself eligible to become a registered psychologist if you want to in the future. Um, and as such, there are certain requirements that we have to fulfill, and one of those is the attendance hurdle. So, yeah, you're still going to have to complete the attendance hurdle. Um, of course, there is a range of... Um, uh, adapted alternative activities that we fashioned around the early um, practical classes. And so you could go and do those if you have not done those already and you did miss those classes or we'll see you've done them, the quizzes and so forth in the LMS. If you've missed more recent classes and at the end of, well, very shortly, the end of next week, we have a look at the attendance data and we see that you've fallen short. Don't worry. It doesn't mean you're not going to pass. It just means you'll have to do a little bit of makeup work and we'll assign you some work that's related to the practical class that you missed so that you learn what you missed in that practical class. You make up the hurdle requirement as well. And in doing so, you're all prepared for the exam. So it's a win-win. Um, so REP, remember, is not a hurdle, but you get 5%. So, and there's all those reasons to do it. So go and do some REP. The assignment, feedback tomorrow. If you haven't handed it in yet and you don't have an extension, apply for special consideration, mention why you haven't been able to apply until now, and contact me if you have any problems. If there's any loose ends that you haven't done um, and you're just tuning in now, go back and listen to the last half an hour of the stream. If you're stuck with loose ends, you've listened to the last half of the half hour of the stream, you don't know what to do, send me an email, we'll work it out together. Don't worry, 
This is going to be fine. One way or another, we'll solve all of the problems. I think that's probably everything that I wanted to touch on. Um, what, what do you reckon? Where are we at? Who's got questions? Does this stream finish at five? It might. We'll see, um, uh, Serena, how we go with questions. Probably not. We might go a little bit long. Assessment literacy modules equals grading those essays. That's right, Scout. It submits once you complete it. That's right. Um, yeah, so the SPSS stuff we'll talk about more next week. And yeah, it's going to be about interpreting output from SPSS. Is retrieval practice on the exam? I reckon it might be. It was in um, Meredith's uh, lectures in the practical class, although my suspicion would be that it's already been um, you know, the focus of a major assignment. So there won't be an incredible number of um, exam questions on it. That would be my suspicion. How would I recommend to study? We're going to talk about that next week. So um, next week, I will be having two uh, consultations or probably three, actually, if we include my coordinator live stream uh, consultations with you and... Uh, I'll advertise the times shortly. And in one of those live streams, we are going to talk about how to approach studying for the exam and how to prepare to study, how to start to study, how to think about the process, um, how you can set yourself up to do it in um, a, uh, a, with as little stress as possible. And of course, you already know a lot of the answers to these questions from your assignment and from the assessment literacy module and from that whole piece of work. That topic was not chosen by accident. That topic was chosen intentionally so that you could gain some knowledge that you can apply in, in rehearsal, in skills, in preparing for assignments and exams. Um, you can actually, you're getting something out of the psychology subject already, right? The idea is that you can take that stuff about retrieval practice and so forth, apply it to what we're about to embark on in terms of exam preparation and do this for all of the other exams and start to apply psychology to your own life. Yeah, the exam, the attendance, the literacy assessment module and the essay. Yeah, that's right, Lucy. So the REP is not a hurdle, but you get marks for it, plus all of the other things. Hi, Georgia. That's very sweet. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, assignments, that's right. Attendance is still a hurdle. I did. Yes, Brianna. Yeah, uh, tomorrow afternoon, Mark's come back. Hey, tell me, how has behavioral neuroscience been? Have you found it interesting? And uh, have you found it challenging? How's the, the level of difficulty, I suppose, been for you around behavioral neuroscience? Complex, right? Yeah, lots of biology. Oh, similar to what you're doing in biology, interesting. A bit dense. You should have seen how it used to be. It is hard, isn't it? But it's super interesting, isn't it? Loving it. Complicated and loving it, yeah.
not your cup of tea. This is the thing with psychology. Um, it's a broad discipline. There are um, many different areas of psychology and first year psychology is wonderful and that you get to try so many different areas and get a sense for what does interest you and what is your cup of tea and you can then specialize more and more as you go on. I was, uh, I couldn't make up my mind. I loved everything, most things quite a bit. Um, I loved cognition, I loved sensation and uh, psychophysics and perception, uh, I loved neuroscience and I ended up in clinical psychology and, and couldn't make up my mind, but uh, for my doctoral degree, brought all of those things together for uh, what I did. So you don't necessarily have to choose one or specialize in one area. And right now, most of the work I'm doing is um, more far removed from psychophysics and neuroscience and more in the area of what uh, would be called social psychiatry. Jason is an awesome lecturer. I think um, a few of you, judging from um, what I've seen on the uh, Uni Mel Love Melbourne University Love Letters uh, Facebook page, I think a few of you heard the uh, video that Jason accidentally uploaded of the raw, the raw takes uh, instead of the final edited version with him breathing heavily and getting a little bit frustrated. Uh, it gives you a sense of how much work he puts into uh, and effort he puts into it, right? How many lectures have there been in total for the course? Um, Oh my God, where are we? Uh, uh, ooh, uh, six, 18? 18 altogether. Oh, plus my 12 research methods modules, plus the revision ones we're doing uh, next week. So next week's gonna be all about revision and preparing you for uh, the exam. That includes the um, Practical classes next week, they're going to be all about revision and preparing you for the exam and, and winding things up. Time went fast, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It is blowing my mind that we're at that. You know, there's this, and then there's other projects, my research projects, for example. Man, I cannot believe that we've ended up at the end of May already. Things have just moved so quickly. That's all you can do, Scout, try your best. So, any other questions that we want to ask at this point? I'm glad it's been a friendly subject, Kathuni. Chathuni. That's certainly what we aim to provide. It's been such a weird, weird year, right? So, uh, and I, I must say, I hear from tutors that they feel like it's been an equally friendly experience and working with you. So thank you very much for that. Um, it has been a, a weird year and it's been challenging for everybody, students and staff alike. And your tutors actually tick both of those boxes. Most are, most are students and staff concurrently. Um, so thank you for uh, engaging with them so effectively this year, really jumping on board with, with the classes and our shut up and write sessions and um, the assignment preparation sessions and just um, showing your enthusiasm and your, your interest, it's been great. And for the, the, the very, uh, I think, mindful and sensitive way in which you've conducted discussion around um, topics uh, that might come up that are sensitive in nature, I've been really impressed by some of the things that I've, I've heard. So thank you. Well done again. Thank you, Laura. We've still got to do mind, brain, and boogie, don't we? 
that sort of fell off and I wanted to leave you guys alone when I thought you were feeling a little bit overwhelmed during the semester break. We still got plenty of time. So even though next week is week 12 and then the following week is swap back and then the exam isn't until the end of June, that doesn't mean that um, we all go up in smoke at the end of next week. Uh, we'll keep live streaming. Uh, well, I will keep live streaming with you all the way through to the exam. Uh, is Charlie in here? Where's my puppy dog? Oh, he's not in here. But we'll. I think we'll do... Um, the traditional Charlie and Chris um, chill out live stream the night before the exam so we can all just hang out and uh, relax. Oh yes, I have a dog. He's around here somewhere. He's, he's, I think he's outside. Hey, Kerry, yeah, I like to um, do consultations via Zoom, particularly around um, subject coordination. And uh, I, I get a lot out of working uh, with you via the chat window and via this stream um, paradigm, framework, setup, whatever you want to say. It works really well. Uh, I think it's a great way for us to engage together, particularly when I've got nearly 2,000 students in one subject. Um, we can do this regularly. I think it's a great way for us to feel like we're, start, we're, we're part of something. And like in previous years, we start to see people in the chat window start to form groups and so forth. And it just turns into a really great way to um, keep the mind, brain, and behavior community going along. And we just saw somebody from a previous year pop in. So um, certainly, if you haven't already, I sound like a YouTuber, but if you haven't already, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and then you can always pop in and say hi to YouTube, to YouTube, to your classmates, even when you go beyond Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1. Katia, I also have a cat. Well, look, my partner has a cat. Um, well, we have a cat, but uh, uh, the cat does not really like me. Or am I being a bit hard on myself? She's not really inclined to spend a lot of time with me. She's definitely his cat, not mine. Is it a psychology thing for every professional to have a dog? Um uh, yeah, I, I, I um, get my marine mammal training fix from my dog. He, he occasionally uh, has to perform like a seal. I don't throw fish in. Maybe I should. Uh, it's a, he's a chocolate Labrador. His name's Charlie. Where is Charlie? Let me see if he's around. Hey, Charlie. Charlie, is he coming? Hello, come on, you gotta say that everyone. Hello, all right, come up here, come up here and say hello. This is Charlie. Oh, I have a big stretch. Oh yes, have a big stretch. This is Charlie the Chocolate Labrador. Charlie is um, just a little over one year old and he is, just a darling, aren't you? Hmm? Yeah. So Charlie does a very good job of coming along to uh, live streams before. Oh, thank you. Oh, big cash. Yes. Oh, so good. Coming along to live streams before the uh, exam. So he comes and helps us chill out, don't you? Oh, you're so sleepy. Yeah. There you go. So shiny, Charlie, you're so shiny. Oh, I'm a very naughty daddy. I need to give you dinner, don't I? Eh? Is it dinner time? Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. MBB therapy dog. That's right. Ah, uh, Laura B. I was wondering if somebody was going to mention Charlie's appearance at the lecture last year. Yeah. Wow. That lecture recording is something to, to watch back for sure. Oh my goodness. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You're, you're, you're famous for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh dear. All right, everyone. Well, I think, um, yes, Charlie is now telling me it is time for dinner. And that's, I think, where we'll end up the stream for the day. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And for those of you who are tuned in late, um, you can go back as soon as I click end on the stream. It'll publish on YouTube via the same link and you can go back. No, no, no. Leave the tripod alone. You can go back and um, you can... Uh, get up to date with all of the important details about the exam and so forth. Uh, Stefania, I'll, I'll answer that for you next week. Um, it was part of the big reformat of Mind, Brain and Behaviour one. Thanks, everyone. So you have yourself a nice evening. I'll provide more details tomorrow about what to expect in the coming week. And assignment marks are back tomorrow. So thank you very much, everyone, again. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, y'all. And uh, have a relaxing evening, and I will speak with you again very soon. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye now.